All right, good morning. It is 8.09 a.m. Eastern Standard Time here, March the 23rd, 2022. I have here on the screen the first round knockout of 36-year-old Sonny Bill Williams versus uh, 45-year-old Barry Hall, the type of fights that are right up my alley here on this Wednesday morning. It was a live Australian fight. And for those who don't know, Australian fights take place on um, uh, Wednesday nights over there. Um, I'm going to show the knockout. Me and my colleague, Big J, are going to talk about it. And um, some bigger, better things going on. Oh, 70 seconds for Barry Hall. It's going to Williams it's win. Sonny B for Barry Hall. It's going to Williams it's win. Sonny Bill, he's the king. Wow. Round And we're going home. Unbelievable, Barry. That was incredible. And let's study what happened here. There's a right wow. temple shot. He didn't miss, Barry. He was so yep. accurate. I'm oh, sorry, Sonny. He was just so accurate. The temple shot just... I'm oh, sorry, Sonny. He was just so accurate. The temple shot just oh. above the ear. Perfectly legal. And Barry was in a whole lot of trouble from this point on. I'm just so impressed with. All right, Big J. So tell me about this fight. Um, okay, so there was a 10 year age difference. Uh, there was yep. a 10 pound weight difference, correct? More, more like 20. 11 kilos. What? That's 22 pound. Okay. Uh, Sonny Bill Williams has a record now of nine and zero with four KOs. His last fight prior to this was in June of uh, 2021 against, uh, I'm not even going to butcher the guy's name. Before that, he had a long layoff, six uh, plus years where he had fought in 2015. He does have Francois Botha on his resume, by the way, he's undefeated. But Barry Hall, before we get into the nitty gritty of the fight, and we're going to listen to the uh, post-fight interviews and the fight that a lot of fans are hoping looking forward to happening is a um sonny bill williams versus a paul gallon or in this case i'm going to say paul gallon's the a-side gallon versus a uh, sonny bill um barry hall he's now oh one in one um only fight was a um the 2019 fight against paul uh gallon that he didn't win but tell me this you know for people who don't know who is barry hall and and you know how big is he in australia Barry Hall is an AFL, Australian Football League, uh, Aussie Rules legend, 2005 Premiership winning captain with the Sydney Swans, um, and basically the hard ass or the bad boy of the AFL period, probably from oh, easy 2000s all the way up to probably about 2015 when he retired, because mm -hmm. he knocked out a West Coast player with one punch. I should have told you to bring that clip up. Uh, one punch on a right football now. field. I can't remember when that was, but just one swing, left hook, bang, and knocked the old mate out cold. So, yeah, he was the bad boy of the AFL. I mean, I'm a league player. I'm a Queenslander, so AFL is just a, you know, not, <laughs> when, you're, when you're from Queensland, AFL is just considered a sook sport. So, but anyway, um, yeah, the, the pretty much the hardest bloke in the AFL over the last 20 years. Uh, okay. And, you know, does it, like, you know, how, how did this fight come about? Well, I mean, obviously it was fed off the um, popularity of the Gallon Hall fight. It's always the thing, you know, who's tougher, the AFL, the NRL. They've mm -hmm. had amateur nights where they've put in legends, you know, together and they've all boxed each other. And nine times out of ten, the NRL guy knocks the fuck out of the AFL guy. Um, yeah, but it's, it's one of those old things, you know, what's the tougher sport, NRL, AFL? It's, you know, as I said, the turf war when... When it was um, Barry Hall, Paul Gallon was a code war, same thing. Gotcha. So, and um, and uh, Sonny Bill, how how was he in boxing? Um, yeah, he's all right. well. I mean, to be honest, I mean, bro, well, where, yeah, well, where did he come from? Uh, he's a New Zealand bloke. Um, mm. He played in the NRL for the Sydney for the Canterbury Bulldogs. Was won a premiership, good? then went to. Sorry? Was he good? Why is he not playing anymore? Injuries? No, 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 no. He's a glory hog. He would only get the ball when they're 10 metres from the line and run over and score. You, you couldn't ta you can't tackle or save himself. So I don't think he was very good. Okay. So people might disagree with me, but he was carried by the Bulldogs. He was carried by the 
New Zealand um, All Blacks won two World Cups and then he was carried by the Sydney Roosters. Okay. So I don't think he's very good at all. That's just my opinion. Other people may so differ. So there was a knockdown. Um, the, the first knockdown of the fight, I'm surprised that they allowed the fight to continue after that because to me, it looked like he was done, meaning uh, uh, Barry Hall, because he was down on the canvas. I'm, I'm pulling up the clip right now of the uh, knockdown. Yeah, the ref pulled him up. What's that bullshit? Yeah, that's what I'm saying, uh, you know. Hold, I'm, I'm playing it right now. He won't enjoy watching his face at the moment. Oh, Barry down. Wow. He's been cracked with the left hook. And he's done. Barry Hall. You know, the referee can't do that. You can't just try to help up a fighter. Yeah, exactly. But I don't think he called it a knockdown. I think he called it a slip or a fall or something. That's what, yeah, that's yeah, why he helped yeah. Him out. Yeah, yeah, that's why we're it. looking. What the? F yeah, but the other two knockdowns, they're all legit as all fuck. So, yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, before everyone goes, I you know Sonny destroyed him. Sonny beat a man that was ten years older, that was ten kilos lighter, that barely had a boxing record. So just mm -hmm. everyone just calm down before yeah you, know, you get excited. But. You know, if he fights Gallon, great. I'd rather him fight Justice Hooney, personally. I think that would be a better fight. You think... Mm, you think... I mean, uh -huh. you think that... I mean, well, do you think the Hooney team wouldn't make that fight? Because I would think that Sonny Bill is more dangerous than um, than uh, Paul Gallon. Yeah, well, I mean, Sonny Bill's just a big muscle band guy. I mean, mm. you know, can he really fight? I mean, okay, he can take out a 45-year-old guy. Big deal. But can he take yeah, out true. an actual boxer? I don't true. think so. True. We do Friends need both to see. have belted him for yeah, 10 we, rounds. Yeah, yeah, we do need to see. Uh, uh, here, let's listen to the post-fight interview. By the way, take a time out, please. Like the video, subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at T Street Controversy and Big J at Old Mate Big J. Let's listen to the uh, post-fight interview from uh, Sonny Bill. To this contest, Sydney, mate, but it was your winner, Sonny Bill. All right, I'm going to interject right now, Sonny, while you've got your hand raised. Talk to me. Rugby the union player, rugby league player, you said you want to be known as a boxer. You made that well and truly known tonight. Uh, firstly, I'd just like to say, Layla, il Allah, Muhammad Rasulullah. All praise to the Most High. Um, I'm going to steal the mic here for a little bit. I've got a lot of thank yous. Secondly, Stan, Mike Sneesby, guys, um, I appreciate you guys for so long. Foxtel or Fox Sports have had a monopoly on this. And this is, for me, when I say the glory comes, it's the glory comes because it, I'm, a, I'm a part of opening up another avenue for li young lions, young fighters coming through to provide for their family. Um, I'd also like to thank my team, Andy Lee. I love you, brother. Tanza Mandin, I love you, bro. Chok Mandin, I love you, bro. Osman Saeed, I love you, brother. Uh, there's so much. The NASA brothers, Coda Nessa. Um, I appreciate you guys. Uh, big shout out back home to UK, Tyson Fury and... And uh, Joe Parker, they called me just before the fight. I appreciate you guys. Much love. And um, last but not least, my beautiful wife is up here somewhere. Yay! She got to, she got to get dressed up. And um, just to the crowd, uh, for, for me, I always say that there's a, there's a reason why only 1% of people do this type of stuff. So much respect to Barry and his team for coming in and doing this because, man, it was, it was hella nervous before the fight. But... For me, the glory is being able to propel the sport and, and help young youngsters come through and reach their dreams. So, um, Allah wa alhamdulillah. Thank you, Ira. You say you want to create a stage to create more dreams for younger tires, tigers or younger cubs. What's next for you? What stage are you creating next and who do you want? Yeah, I'll, um, yeah, well, you know, there's talk of Gallon, so maybe Gallon, uh, but... But at, at the same time, uh, for me, um, I feel like I'm an all-rounded person. There has to be some element of giving back, which um, gives me that happiness and contentment I yearn, I yearn for. So um, I can't wait to get home and see my beautiful little kids, Iman, Aisha, Zaid, and Issa. They're all sleeping, but, yeah, they can see it in, back, uh, when they grow older. Yeah, thanks. Cool. Congratulations, and we love seeing you out there tonight. Well done. Thank you. Thank you very much. So realistically, in your thoughts, what do you think is next for um, for um, uh, Sonny Bill? Well, obviously the gallon fight is going to be the big thing. But as I have I said previously on the channel, both those fellas work for Channel Nine Football. Mm -hmm. So whether or not they're going to let them fight 
due to their whatever the nature of their contracts are? I don't know. Mm-hmm. And if that happens, it probably won't happen until after the football season. The football season's just kicked off, so that's six months away. Yeah. So, uh, seven. Seven if you count all the finals. So that fight probably won't happen until October. So... And I'm wondering I think you need if, to have another fight. I'm wondering if the network that they work for will win some type of compensation. I'm wondering if that's even legal. I I don't want to get into that. I'm not a lawyer, but yeah. you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think I really think. I mean, there's Lucas Brown. So uh, no, the, the, the point I'm trying to make is, um, there's some obstacles. The fight can't just be made. That's, that's pretty much it. Can't no, just, no, no. Yeah, there's some obstacles. No. No, there's a lot. There's a lot of obstacles. A lot of people don't understand. They think it's oh, it's going to be easy now. It's not because Channel Nine might not allow it. Yeah. So that's that's one problem. So. Well, but yeah. I'd like to see him fight. Sorry. You said uh, go ahead. You you were saying uh, Lucas Brown. Yeah, Lucas Brown would be a good fight. I think Justice Spoonie would be a really good fight. Yeah, you know, any of those you know um, heavyweights because as a heavyweight, Sonny Bill has an incredible. Uh, incredible um, stature. I mean, he looks like he's chiseled out of granite. He actually looks really, really good. No other heavyweight in the country looks like that. So, yeah, I'd, I'd like to see, you know, what he could do against an actual heavyweight, not a washed up, broken down 40-year-old, mm-hmm. an actual heavyweight. See how he goes. So, I mean, you know, like I'm looking at him the, right the now, he's so, much bigger than, he's so much bigger than Paul Gallen. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Oh, yeah. He would be what, at least four inches taller and at least 15 kilos heavier. Yeah. Well, at, le- at least 10, at least 10 kilos. So, well, you know, Paul can get his final cash out, you know, look like that's what it's going to mm. be. Maybe. You know, Maybe. If, they fi- if they find a way, of course, to make it happen. But uh, to wrap up the video, how do you feel about the card? Uh, Anthony Mundine's son for uh, Raheem Mundine. Carbon, spit an image, carbon copy of his old man. Moves the same. Fates the same, uses the same power, the same stance, pretty much a carbon copy of his old man. Okay. So, yep, um, not not a bad fight. Um, you know, he's obviously got a long way to go considering he's had no amateur record whatsoever. That was mm-hmm. his first ever fight. So, you know, he's got a long way to go, but, you know, he seems like he's got the goods. So we'll see how he goes. Uh, the rest of the card, you know, B minus. You know, uh, obviously the fight of the night was Paul Fleming versus uh, Jackson England. Brilliant, brilliant fight. Even a contender for fight of the year. That was an absolute cracking fight. So, mm-hmm. and I believe that Paul Fleming might be getting a shot at the IBO um, Super Featherweight title. Who the Italian? There's an Italian champion. I can't remember his name, but there's a Italian bloke who's the champion. Um, the rest of the card. Um, what's his name? Backway Akaway. Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah. How'd that fight go? Um, he fought uh, John Wright. By the way, for those who don't know. Yeah, 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 went all right. I mean, yeah, he was just doing that to get the ring rust off. He's not going to stay a cruiserweight by his own admission, he said in the post-fight. I need to drop back down. He's looking at um, light heavy, even maybe going back down to super middle. So he's got to get himself in a lot better shape before he gets back down to that. He's okay. going to lose 20 kilos, yeah. or at least 10, at least 10 kilos. Uh, that fight was okay. You know, nothing special, but it was good, you know, get the ring rust out. Um, the first cruiserweight fight was really good. Uh, the... Super welterweight fight. Um, Terry Nichols, his super weight welterweight fight against Jason. I can't remember his name, last name. That was actually pretty shit. But he actually, Terry Nichols called out Nikita Zhu at the end of it. Mm-hmm. He reckons he wants to fight him on the um, George uh, Haney undercard. I'm like, don't see how the fuck that's going to happen. But okay. anyway, at least he's calling him out. Um, so the welterweight fight was terrible. Uh, that was a bad, solid B. Plus. I mean, Stan did a good, really good job. The production value was good. The commentary was good. But they've got to stay as far away from that music bullshit as possible. They yeah, threw it's, on. Not, it's not for everybody. And it does turn me off, too, when they have um, uh, just yeah. these, you know, musical performance. I, I can barely get through, you know, when fighters come out with rappers or musical guests, when the voice, uh, the music is all, you know, like muffled. I, I can't stand any of it. I just, you know, maybe I'm getting too old, whatever, but. You know, I understand what they're trying to do with the musical entertainment. But for me, I just want to see the fighters fight and just, you know, use your entrance music, get to the ring fight, you know, do the national anthems. OK, but everything else I'm not really into. Yeah, well, Barry Hall got so sick of waiting. He actually walked out with a still a minute to go in the, in the main song. I don't know if it was walkout song or not, because I didn't announce him. He just walked out. Mm. I'm like, I oh, thank God for that. Because yeah, it was getting it was, 
it was actually getting to the point of, hang on, why the fuck are we watching this old washed up singer who's a one hit wonder, but belt out this bullshit song? Yeah. Just get the fighters in the ring. Yeah. So, Especially after a long night, think, you know, yeah, yeah, people want to see the main yeah. event. But I really think that if Stan keeps this up and they keep belting out these good cards, right, and keep the price lower than main event, main event's going to be in a bit of trouble because sooner or later, if people are hard and ready, they're not going to pay 60 bucks to see Tim Zoo fight. Mm-hmm. They'll be like, yeah, nah, because 60 bucks is a complete fucking ripple if I've always said that. Yeah. I mean, 50 bucks is cheaper, but still, I mean, if Stan can, you know, get around 40 bucks and give quality pay per views, Main event's going to be in a lot of trouble, and I think that's what their intention is. Mm-hmm. So, Sonny Bill said, you know, to be another that platform main event's because had the main, of, main event has pretty much had the monopoly. So, yeah, you know, you know, yeah. staying if they're smart, they don't have the competition to upset that. Exactly, and I welcome it because if you can get a you know quality product that's cheaper than the competitions, why would you pay bloody main event sixty bucks? Because yeah. you know their, their, their last few cards haven't been that great. So, especially that Paul Gallon Darcy. Lastly, one that was a fucking embarrassment. Yeah, that was. Uh, I remember that. But uh, listen, Big J, we do have to wrap it up. Um, going a little bit over time, but uh, closing thoughts overall. You're happy with the event, though. Like, you know, would, do you, was it worth the fifty bucks? Oh yeah, solid B minus. Mm-hmm. So they lose points for um, a couple of bad fights and that music bullshit, but bar that, solid B minus. So okay, yeah, well, it, it's it. Good. What were you saying? Oh, sorry. It certainly gives a, a hint that if they continue this trend, main event's going to be in a little bit of trouble. So, well, we will see as time goes on. I'm interested to see what their next fight is going to be, or be, or if they're going to be able to attract other fighters. Because remember, you now have main event stand, and then you also have the far, far more cheaper option. It's better. That's better suited to give you better fights in um in uh, the zone. You know, so we'll see. Um, take your time out. Please like the video, subscribe. It's T-Shirt Controversy and Big J with 5B360.com.